The new KUGAM 3 approaches one inch sensor image quality. Could that really be true? Hi, my name is Mick. I'm a beta tester for both Insta360 and Cantal. I've been testing the KUGAM 3 for two months now, and in this video, I'm going to talk about their latest claim that the KUGAM 3 can have comparable image quality to the Insta360 one inch 360. Let's talk about it. If you're into 360 cameras, you've probably heard of Insta360. You might not have heard about Kandao, but actually Kandao is a prominent player in the 360 industry. They're more well known for their professional 360 cameras, but they also make consumer 360 cameras as well, including the first hybrid VR180-360 camera, the original KuCam. Now their latest camera is the KuCam 3. It's going to be released on September 7. Now, although the KuCam 3 is the consumer 360 camera, that's competing against the Insta360 X3. Their teaser photo did something pretty gutsy, which was to compare them against the Insta360 one inch 360. That's Insta360's flagship consumer 360 camera that costs over two times or about two times the cost of the Insta360 X3. Could that really be true? Could the KuCam 3 really have image quality comparable to the Insta360 one inch 360? Now there are a lot of factors that affect image quality. It's not just sensor size or aperture. I mean, for example, if a sensor has newer technology, then it will tend to have better image quality. How about your processor? Well, if it uses higher compression, then it's going to have lower image quality. Or your lens, could have, some of them are sharper than others. So it's not easy to talk about image quality, but we can talk about light gathering capability. Now, you probably know that larger sensors have better image quality, but have you thought about why? It's because a larger sensor can gather more photons. That increases the signal to noise ratio and that improves the image quality. So it stands to reason that if you have a camera system that gathers more light, then it can have potentially better image quality than another camera. So let's talk about two things. One is sensor size and one is aperture. Now the KuCam 3 has a 1 over 1.55 inch sensor. That's larger than a typical 1 over 2.3 inch sensor, but it's still smaller than the 1 inch sensor. So uh, the 1 inch sensor has a surface area that's about 2.2 times larger than the 1 over 1.55 inch. So if you think about that in terms of f-stops, it's around 1 or 1.2 f-stops advantage for the 1 inch 360. On the other hand, the KuCam 3 has a larger aperture. Its aperture is f1.6 compared to the Insta360 1 inch 360's f2.2 aperture. Now in terms of uh, f-stop difference between the two, it's almost one stop difference. So you get the 1.2 sensor advantage of the Insta360 against the one-stop advantage of the KuCam 3 in aperture and it's kind of like a watch. So that's where, in, where Kandao's statement comes from, how they can claim that it approaches the image quality of the Insta360 1-inch 360. Well, what about the Insta360 X3 and the KuCam 3? How do they compare? Well, the KuCam 3 has a larger aperture and a larger sensor size than the Insta360 X3. KuCam 3 has a sensor that is about 1.66 times larger than that of the Insta360 X3. And in terms of aperture, its aperture is about one fourth stop larger than the Insta360 X3. So if you combine the two, then the KuCam 3 has about one stop advantage over the Insta360 X3. All right, so that sounds really cool in theory, but how does it work in the real world? Well, uh, in the real, wo real world, any advantage in aperture is only an advantage in darker conditions. In brighter conditions, you're going to be able to shoot at ISO 100 in any case. Secondly, even a one-stop advantage between the KuCam 3 and the X3 might not be as big as it sounds. I mean, let's compare the Insta360 X3 and the 1 inch 360 as examples. The 1 inch 360 has a bigger advantage over the Insta360 X3. And yet, when you compare them side by side, a lot of people don't see much of a difference between them. I mean, to me, I'm a camera enthusiast. I love the 1 inch 360's image quality. But for average consumers, 
Um, a lot of them actually prefer the Insta360 X3, especially because of uh, active HDR. Third is the price. Kandao hasn't talked about the KuCam 3's price. So let's say its image quality is a little bit better than the Insta360 X3. How much extra would you need to pay for it? We don't know yet. We're going to find out next week. If you have any questions about the Google Cam 3, leave them in the comments. Obviously, I'm still under embargo, but I'll do my best to answer them. And if I can't answer them right now, I'll at least try to answer them in my review. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in 360.